Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So I am finally, finally able to do a reading tea section. But um, I do want to start off by saying the notes in my description are very, very, very amazing. They have helped so many people. Um, I do have two sections of my notes. One section are 14 pages of very, very, very detailed math notes, meaning they tell you which equations to know, how to work out word problems, which was a very, very, very requested thing, which I think I might do a video on how to work out those word problems. I do have it color coded, which they are very great, very detailed, and I can say that with confidence, I know they will work and I know they will help. So since I did get a 100 on my math section, I did do a separate math section note. Other note section is called a tease note section which is detailed very detailed anatomy notes and then the other like the last six pages are english and reading um, first off i'm going to start with read the questions first i say that because i did not do that the first time and i ended up running out of time just because you're pretty much blindly reading the passage and then you have no idea what they're asking you to look for so i say read the questions first Read them all, get them down, get an idea of what you should be looking for. So once you read the passage, you're like, oh yeah, they asked me this, they asked me this, they asked me this. So you have a good idea of what you should be looking for. Second, obviously, do not leave the questions blank. Make it educated, but like I always, always say, if you don't know what the question's asking you, flag it because you can come back and maybe it'll come to you later. And if not, Make an educated guess and you got this. Okay, so there are two sources that the whatever you're reading could come from. A, a primary source, which is the original source, who's, who's it coming from, and a, a secondary source. An example of a primary source would be a, a photograph that I took, a diary that I wrote, a letter that I wrote, an autobiography that I wrote, um, which would which would be the original source. So it came from me. It's about me. So I'm the primary source. The second one is secondary source. If it's coming from somebody else, a newspaper, an obituary, a biography. So I didn't write that, but it's about me. So it's a secondary source. And that's pretty um, self-explanatory, I would say. Passage types. Uh, I'm going to go over three of them. Expository persuasive and narrative so an expository you can first scan the sorry i'm reading my notes on my laptop first you can scan the passage if you see any numbers or like factual information or if it's informing you you should automatically know that's an expository so you could find like something like this in an encyclopedia so if it's telling you information and it's asking where would this most likely come from you would know it's from an encyclopedia uh, if it's saying like the history of or if it has a date of something or anything with numbers or factual information is always expository. Persuasive, obviously, if I'm persuading you. So if it's using words like good, should, best, seemed, those are all like personal opinion. So I'm not going to read an encyclopedia and it's telling me I should believe this because that's persuasive and it's not factual. So if, if it's coming from like a an author's like opinion, it's persuasive. They're trying to persuade you to believe this way or think this way. The last one I will be going over is narrative. A narrative is if it's telling a personal story, if it's using words like we, I, they, we, my, if it's having any type of dialogue or conversation or if it has quotation marks, you always know that's a narrative. And the purpose of a narrative is always to entertain. So, Carolyn McAllister says this, you never, if it's asking you what type of passage it is, you never have to read the whole thing because it's not going to ask you what did blah, blah, blah think during this time or like any questions like that they're going to ask you what type of passages is this so you can scan through it you don't need to read the whole thing you can scan through it okay if i see any numbers or if they're giving me any factual information i know it's an expository or if they're using any persuasive words if they're giving me any type of opinion using words like should seemed best most it's a persuasive if you see any type of those words you know it's persuasive 
if you see any type of narrative um, pronouns, we, I, they, any dialogue, conver any dialogue conversation, any quotation marks, you know it's a narrative. So you never have to read a whole passage when it's asking you what type of passage type it is because you just have to look for those key factors and you can already know just by scanning the passage. So write that down and keep it in your brain. Also, the purpose of a narrative is always to entertain. Always to entertain. Same with the persuasive, is always to persuade. And yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and jump to reference materials. So they, a lot of time they will ask like, where was this, where do you think you could find this information? So there are five types of information that they could be coming from. One would be a dictionary, obviously. If it's asking you a definition of something, it's coming from a dictionary. So dictionary is to look up the meaning of words. We probably all know that. If the source is a book that has, has similar meanings, so synonyms, so if it's asking you what other word could replace this word, well, you know, you can go looking at the source because they're going to have all the words and it's going to have a similar meaning words that you can use in replace of that one. So an almanac is a book or calendar determining when the next tide is or the phases of the moon or a solar eclipse. Okay, so an almanac will always be useful when you're wanting to find out something that happened maybe last year or previous years or when it normally happens around. Um, an index is the very back of the book. So if you're wanting to see, hmm, when do they talk about a heart failure? Okay, I'm gonna go in the back of the book. Any time the word heart failure is listed, it's gonna have all those page numbers. So the index can be very helpful sometimes. Alrighty, and key ideas and details. The main idea is the same statement as a thesis. So uh, the main idea is always, always, always going to be the last statement of the first paragraph, which is a thesis. Some of y'all probably already know that. So if it's asking you what the main idea is, you go to the first paragraph and look at the last sentence, and that should always be the main idea. So the main idea is always stated in a thesis. To know the main idea, you don't even have to read the entire passage. All you have to do is read that thesis, and the thesis is always, always, always the main idea. Again, with a summary. A summary and main idea, I would say, is the same thing. So if it's asking what the summary of the passage is, all you gotta do is go to the first paragraph and read the last sentence. So I did look up like what a what the T's like overlook is, and you have 53 questions. Six of them are unscored. You don't know which one, so do your best on every single question and just pray and hope the one you don't know is the one that's not scored. You have roughly now, it doesn't skip to the next question if you take longer than a minute, but in order to get everything done in the right time, you have one minute and 12 seconds per question. Majority of the reading to you, so it's going to ask you what is the main idea or what is the key idea of like this in the passage or in this paragraph. The other like quarter is you're going to be working with sources. The other one is specific words and passage details. So don't freak out on those because they're not a big um, part of the test. Now, one thing I liked was there are a couple of charts that. Okay, so an example, you got it. You got it, I promise. Okay, I'm going to restart. So I like that they do have a lot of charts on the test, which make it easier because that's more questions that you're most likely to get right. There are six questions usually to each passage, and it'll say like, you're on three questions of six on this passage. And it's gonna say, ew, they're watching me film, that was so awkward. Okay, anyways, um, it's gonna say, which of the following is the mode of this passage? Meaning, what type of passage is this? Persuasive, narrative, expository, and informative. Now, I want to jump to y'all's questions that you asked me. She said, study how to identify passage types, which I told y'all that. Know what a simile is. A simile is always if it's using like or as. She also said, remember a logical conclusion is a conclusion made by you. It isn't an answer in the story. 
Okay, that's a good thing to know. So a logical conclusion is not in the story. So don't go looking through the story. It's just based off of what you would think by reading this information. Main idea is a thesis statement, which is the last sentence of the first paragraph. Just read the questions first and then read the passage. Pace yourself, don't overthink it. I had like 25 minutes left after my reading. I had 25 minutes left on my reading after I scanned looking for passage types, looking for the persuasive words, looking for the expository words, and looking for the narrative words. Um, also, I had 25 minutes left because I read the questions first, which I told y'all I did not do that the first time. I think I'm going to go ahead and close it out here. I really, really hope I answered everybody's questions. Like I said, I do have my notes in the description. There's really not much you can go over here just because the questions are so repetitive. So I did go over just about everything that you will see on your test. If you have any questions left for me, please do not hesitate to email me message me on her Instagram. I literally will respond in like five minutes if I don't respond right then and there. Um, or leave them down in the description for other people who have taken the test. I love to help everyone just because I finally reached my goal. So I wanna help you guys reach your goal as well. Um, yeah, so follow me on Instagram at Caitlin Soldania. You can message me for help or you can just tell me that I helped you. Let me know if I helped y'all. Let me know if this video helps y'all. Let me know if my other videos helped okay so basically let me know if you have any questions i'm gonna go ahead and close this out because my phone keeps running out of storage so i hope i helped y'all and let me know what y'all want to see next see ya